Hello, and thank you for tuning in into your presentation. Today, we will be discussing our study that focuses on the New York airport's activity. My teammates, Hanmaro Song, Eva Chao, and myself, Jose Luis Estrada, will walk you through the different aspects of our work, starting with the problem statement, continuing with interesting insights about our analysis, discussing the predictive models and model selection, and concluding with actionable items that provide a solution to the business. Our study focuses on a record of flights from the three major New York airports, John F. Kennedy, La Guardia, and Newark International uh, Airport. The time, scopes, the time scope of this work goes back to the year 2013 by taking into account 16 airlines that have domestic operations within the New York airports. Airport delays cannot be avoided, but a strategy can be recommended to mitigate the financial impact that this can cause. Our data set consisted of 32,735 records with 16 variables. Early on, we had some initial thoughts, as seen in the table, on some of the variables based on basic understanding of flight data and early observations made about the data set. As all of the data collected was from the year 2013, we decided that dropping the year variable would not have any impact on our models. Arrival time and arrival delay are highly correlated with departure time and departure delay. And as our objective was to try to predict departure delays, we thought that information regarding the flight arriving at its final destination may not be the most helpful for our final model. We first started off by trying to deal with our time variables. Our time variables consisted of departure time, hour, and minute. Departure time was represented as a string of a combination of the hour and minute variable. Therefore, in order to address multicollinearity issues regarding departure time, hour, and minute variables, we decided to drop hour and minute and categorize departure time for simplicity and better use in modeling. When plotting departure time against departure delay in minutes, we found that there is a steady increase in departure delay time as the day progressed after 5 a.m. This was followed by a sharp drop in departure delays as flight departures in the early morning also dropped in quantity. As mentioned, data transformation was performed on departure time to further simplify departure time for modeling purposes. As departure delay in relation to departure time showed a general trend upward as time progressed, transforming the departure time should assist in model performance by simplifying this variable. Ultimately, we decided to transform departure time into a categorical variable with a 24-hour cycle divided by quarters. These quarters were defined as midnight to 6 a.m., 6 a.m. to noon, noon to 6 p.m., and 6 p.m. to midnight. We continued our data exploration by examining month and day. When comparing how many flights occur per days of the month, the 31st day of the month showed a decrease in the number of flights. This can be attributed to the fact that only seven months of the year have a 31st day. The number of flights per month ranged from 2,200 to 2,900 flights per month in our data gathered, with the lowest number of flights occurring in February. However, this can be attributed to February being the shortest month of the year. Similarly, months with 31 days had more flights compared to months with only 30 days. Overall, data distribution for flights across the months and days was fairly evenly distributed. When plotting average departure delay by month, we saw a larger range in average departure delay with a skew towards longer departure delays occurring in June, July, and December. Our initial thoughts were whether these longer departure delays were correlated with holidays, which would be assumed times of peak travel periods. This would mean holiday seasons, spring break, and the summer months may have longer departure delays, which is seen on the bar plots. To visualize this further, we grouped days by month showing average departure delay over the course of a year. And as highlighted, we see that in each month, the days with the longest average departure delay occur around peak holiday times, most notably, we observe the following. In February, the longest departure delay occurs before Valentine's Day. In April, this occurs around spring break. In May, this occurs around Memorial Day. In September, this occurs around Labor Day. In November, this occurs around Thanksgiving. And in December, peak delays occur around December 5th, but we do note an increase in average flight delay in the week leading up to Christmas. An additional variable of note is the origin. 
As noted previously, the data gathered is from the three New York International Airports. Plot on the left, we note the distribution of flights across all three airports. Newark International Airport exhibits the most flights, and LaGuardia International Airport had the least amount of flights of the three. We then view departure delays per airport across a box plot, as exhibited in the middle. Without removing any outliers, the median for all three airports appear close to zero, with most of the delays occurring under 400 minutes. After removing outliers, as exhibited in the box plot to the right, Newark International Airport appears to experience the longest range in departure delays, followed by JFK, then LaGuardia. Early on in our data analysis, we were interested in dropping some variables. In particular, some variables of note include tail number and destination. Tail number is the number on the tail of the plane and is unique to a plane that flies from these three airports. There are 3,490 unique tail numbers within the observations. Therefore, we opted to drop this variable due to the amount of unique values within tail number. This is similar to destination, of which there are 102 unique destinations that the flights flew to. Although there aren't thousands of unique variables within the destination variable, the skew in the number of flights to each destination proved to be very uneven, further prompting us to drop this variable. We then examined the carriers and whether they had any correlation to departure delay. We have 16 unique carriers, and as we can see by the box plot, the median departure delay for most of these airlines is close to zero but the range of delays within each carrier shows great disparity depending on the carrier. Across the carriers, a majority of them have delays of 200 minutes or less, with almost all carriers exhibiting delays of 400 minutes or less when excluding outliers. Although the distribution of flights across carriers is not even, with some carriers having thousands of flights and other carriers having only hundreds in comparison, the disparity in departure delay time across the carriers warrants keeping the carrier as a variable. Again, features that have been dropped are year, hour, minute, arrival time, arrival delay, tail num, flight, and destination. Among those that remain, month, day, and airtime features have been normalized. Month was divided by 12, which is the maximum value in months, while day was divided by 31. Air time has been converted into hours from minutes, and distance is in miles and this has not been normalized and is used as is. Departure time has been converted into four discrete values from zero to three, which represent 24 hours divided into four sections. By looking at the correlation plot on the right side, most of them quite have neutral relationship among them but we can see very high correlation value between air time and distance, which makes sense since the farther the distance is between point A and point B, the more time it takes to get there. However, it may not be so wise to drop either of them as it is possible that even a short distance can take longer than usual air time depending on air traffic at a destination. Among all the data are 25,430 long delay feature with a value of 1. Long delay indicates flights that have departure delay of equal to 50 minutes or longer than that. Because the ratio of Y values are 3.48 to 1, naively sampling for train and test dataset might cause a problem where train dataset contains very low number of long delay of zero values. So what's been done is sampling 1,000 random data points from each long delay values so that the test data set of 2,000 records are exactly comprised of equal number of those Y values. When training models to overcome the problem of class imbalance, although it is not as severe as other problems such as credit card fraud detection, smooth Tomac algorithm for resampling was used. For cross-validation, five-fold stratified was used. Total of six different models have been built and evaluated, which are backing classifier with a base model of decision tree, gradient boosting classifier, random forest classifier, linear discriminant analysis, 
logistic regression, and support vector classifier. Among them, bagging classifier has been proved to be performing the best out of all with 78% accuracy and 65% precision. However, based on where businesses would like to put emphasis, either on accuracy, precision, or recall, they can choose a different model to have a better result. As mentioned before, all the models that were built are quite robust. Since the target goal was to predict if a flight will be delayed more than 15 minutes or not, but it is still possible to make it more granular, either by using departure time without converting it into four discrete values, or setting different threshold for departure delay instead of 15 minutes. There are many others that could help improve the performance of models such as adding more features like geolocation of origin airports in addition to their names. Using such models, businesses can specifically target potential customers. For example, using this 15-minute threshold, they can set up a grab-and-go shop where it takes less than a couple minutes to, take, to make a purchase. Also, if they would like to open up a restaurant, they can change this threshold to an hour or longer depending on the business. For airports and airlines, they can use these models to optimize flight traffic to decrease any delays so that their clients get wherever they need to go without much trouble and attract other customers as well. Hello, and thank you for tuning in into your presentation. Today, we will be discussing our study that focuses on the New York airport's activity. My teammates, Hanmaro Song, Eva Chao, and myself, Jose Luis Estrada, will walk you through the different aspects of our work, starting with the problem statement, continuing with interesting insights about our analysis, discussing the predictive models and model selection, and concluding with actionable items that provide a solution to the business. Our study focuses on a record of flights from the three major New York airports, John F. Kennedy, La Guardia, and Newark International uh, Airport. The time, scopes, the time scope of this work goes back to the year 2013. By taking into account 16 airlines that have domestic operations within the New York airports. Airport delays cannot be avoided, but a strategy can be recommended to mitigate the financial impact that this can cause. After looking at the data provided, what did we see? Well, our data analysis showed us that 16 airlines serviced the three airports for a total of 32,000 flights out of New York City, with a relatively even distribution of airlines and flights across the three. Looking at the flight data across the entire year of data provided, the months of June, July, and December show the most significant increase in delays, which aligns with the major holidays and peak travel period. Within the day, the airports seem the busiest and exhibit the longest delays in the mornings from 6 a.m. to noon and evenings from 6 p.m. to midnight. There were also noted delays among specific airlines, such as United Airlines, Eva Airways, and JetBlue. Amongst the three airports, Newark International Airport exhibited the longest delays, followed by JFK, then LaGuardia. What all of this tells us is that amongst the data collected, we have found that the airport of origin, whether or not you depart from JFK, LaGuardia, or Newark International Airport, the airline you fly with, the day you travel on, and the time at which you decide to travel all have an impact on your flight delay. Total of six models have been built and tested. Among the six, bagging classifier with a base model of decision tree outperforms the other models with 78% accuracy score. This doesn't have to be a final model to be used in live, and there are still more room for improvement. By configuring the model more, it's possible to have higher accuracy than 78%. As mentioned before, the models that were implemented are quite robust. Since the target goal was to predict if a flight will be delayed more than 15 minutes or not. But depending on business types such as a fine dining restaurant, which takes an hour or so, or a grab-and-go shop that needs only a couple minutes, 
a company can change the threshold for long delay to set up a desired business. Additionally, instead of only predicting shorter or longer than 15 minutes, one can also have more than two outcomes like short, medium, and long delay. For airports and airlines, they can use these models to optimize flight traffic to decrease any delays so that their clients get wherever they need to go without much trouble and attract other customers as well. Thank you for watching the presentation and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to any one of us.